Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. I wanted to get back to raw therapy. There's been a lot of wonderful discussion going on in all the videos that we've touched on this, and I really wanted to take the opportunity to actually focus on this and bring to you the top four features of this tool, which I feel will be of most value to most people. Let's dig into it. All right, so if this is your first time joining in, thank you so much. Once again, I'm Nate, this is Photo Learningism, and we're gonna focus tonight on raw therapy. Here on this channel, I do a lot of work to surface the cheap or free art technologies that are of benefit to the art community. My goal is to build a community of learning so we can help each other become more knowledgeable about the tools that are available to us and how to use them and how to become more productive creators. So thank you again so much for joining in. Let's get into raw therapy here. I have done previous videos on this and touched on it and compared it against Darktable. Please feel free to go check that out. Tonight we're going to focus exclusively on raw therapy because it is a very powerful tool to its own. It can serve as a raw loader for GIMP or it can function as a, I'll say, near full featured photo editing suite uh, by itself. There are some limitations. For example, it can't do layers, at least not that I found. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it does have some amazing features that I have not spotted in other fully loaded tools such as GIMP, such as CritUp. Uh, that I thought were really worth talking about because there's there's such power in them. So looking at a picture here, again, this is a raw format picture, Nikon, uh, took it myself and uh, loaded that in. And I wanted to touch first on this item called the graduated filter. It's near the bottom here of the exposure section. And similar to Darktable, the way this works is that you have to flip on the module that you're looking for. To make it active otherwise these don't do anything what's so cool about this is it includes this added guide that it gives you not only a sense of where things are and how it fits in with what you're manipulating but you can come over here and graphically manipulate it as well if that's easier for you, so you actually have both planes of control where you could do the individual metrics or numerical metrics, or you could interact with it graphically, which I was very impressed with the power built into that because whatever is more comfortable for you to adjust, you could do a combination of both. You could do that. And beyond that, this is kind of like a cool half vignette feature where if you needed to embolden just part of the image, this is a very powerful and, and somewhat subtle touch that can be added in. I'm a big fan of the vignette touch because it gives you that almost psychological focal point just by using slight darkness, not intense, but just slight darkness. And I really like modules and features that do that. So check this out, the graduated filter with that guide. Uh, very, very easy to use. Next one up I wanted to look at is the distortion correction. Now, this may be another tool that I honestly haven't gone around looking for it. This just happened to pop out at me as I was using this. That aside, I don't remember seeing anything like this. It's a really, really interesting idea, I think, about taking fisheye photos that you wanted to later go correct, <laughs> or at least that's a practical use I could see for this, in this distortion correction under the transform area. Let me show you what happens here as I do it. And that you can see kind of the bubble effect happening in the middle in the middle of a picture. Now this would have more meaning in a picture that was fisheye, but you can get a sense of how you could hypothetically correct that distortion around. You could actually make it more of a level true to perspective shot, which is really cool. You could still get a wide angle shot and use this distortion correction to make it more true to life. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> so check that out. Another feature I wanted to highlight here is a concept called curve copying. This is applicable to really any control, and I've flipped through a couple different ones, it works on all of them, where if you set a specific plane with dots and curvature to manipulate it, and you come to a place where you like it, you could use this to copy across the different color channels or across different controls to match the curve. And let me show you how that works. 
if we just hop back into one of these controls here, right here, the controls are right along the side here, and you have the ability to copy whatever you've set and to paste that into a follow-up grid, which is a huge time saver. Again, if you're gonna be working with individual color channels, if you wanted to manipulate that way, because there are tools here that work by color channel, you could use that to baseline the different curves across the channels and then make subtle adjustments so you don't have to quite do so much legwork in between. So I just thought that was a really innovative, powerful feature that is available in this tool. The last thing I really wanted to touch on here is this concept of snapshotting. You may have seen me hit the button there before if it's on the screen, it's actually not. Let me bring it over. And what's actually happening here is it's like taking a clip in a moment in time that you could roll back to. Now in this case, you can see how it wiped out the distortion correction I did and that is a good safeguard if I wanted that opportunity periodically. I have to do it manually, it doesn't do it for me, but I can create snapshots along the way as I'm working through the, the image that I could purposefully roll back to, which is a really interesting idea when you get around to that. So you also do, of course, have the history to fall back on here if you really wanted to roll back using that as well. Um, so that's another way that you could potentially come back to a point in time. So the history and the snapshots kind of work hand in hand for that. This is like a complete set though, where I wouldn't have to go back and find the particular thing I wanted. I could just set focused moments in my timeline editing history that I could bounce to and from, you know, back and forth. So I thought that was again, very valuable because you could use that to number one, chronicle your journey of, of what you're doing. And you could also use that to look back and say, okay, well, I like it as it is, but what happens if I tack these on these next couple of changes on? If you don't like it, it's very easy to come back to that snapshot shot in time. And that's really awesome. Really innovative, really, really good product. I recommend you go download that. I put that, put a link to the uh, product in the description so you can very easily go find that. It is free, if I haven't said that before, open source and free, fantastic tool. Go check it out. Thank you so much for joining in. I really hope this was interesting to you and valuable. Give me a thumbs up if it was helpful. Leave a comment. Tell me about your favorite features and the value you get out of this tool and how we can make the community of learning that I'm hoping to build that much stronger. Please do subscribe and come back. I love the company. Thank you so much. Take care.